I think one of the things that's important for us as caregivers is to learn how to find a place of rest in the middle of things. Um, some years ago, I was taking care of a, a patient, a very rough, tough, 86-year-old Russian Jewish lady, tough as nails, you know. And we became, we became very close friends, actually. And on the night that she was dying, they called me and I came into the hospice to be with her. And she was sitting on the edge of the bed with her feet dangling off the edge of the bed in her, her dressing gown, breathing with great difficulty, you know. She was clearly actively dying. And so I came in the room and I sat down in the corner on the couch. That's my habit, to sit down in the corner and see if anything's really needed before we jump in to help, you know. And there was a very uh, wonderful home health aide sitting with her on the bed, and wonderful woman. And, and uh, at one point she turned to Adele, this uh, Russian Jewish lady that I described a moment ago. And she said to Adele, you know, Adele, you don't have to be frightened. We're right here with you. And Adele, tough as nails, turned to her and said, Honey, if this was happening to you, you'd be frightened. And so uh, I thought, wow, I stayed in the corner, you know. And then uh, a little while later, this very brave home health aide uh, said to Adele, oh, You look a little cold. Uh, would you like a blanket around your shoulders? And Adele turned back to her and again, tough as nails, said, Of course, I'm cold. I'm almost dead. So I sat in the corner and, and watched this whole exchange between them. And I noticed two things in the exchange. The first was that Adele wanted honesty. She wanted someone who's authentic with her. She didn't want to talk about tunnels of light or bardos or near-death experiences. She wanted straight talk. And the second thing was that there was a struggle. There's often a struggle in dying. There's a labor to die, just like there's a labor to getting born. And in this case, the labor or the struggle was showing up in the breath. She was in the midst of chain stoke breathing. So we made all the proper interventions of morphine and oxygen and all the correct, um, she was uh, well cared for. But I could see that there was something else going on. There was a kind of suffering there. So I pulled my chair up very close to her and I sat just opposite her. And I said, Adele, would you like to suffer a little less? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, I noticed something. I said, just there at the end of your exhale, right there at the very end of your exhale, there was this gap, just this little pause. And I wonder what it would be like if you could put your attention there for just a moment, just in that gap. I'll do it with you. Now, I didn't guide her. I didn't try and get her to breathe in any particular way. I just breathed with her. And what I noticed was that her attention seemed to really drop into this pause, into this gap at the end of the exhale. And as it did, I could see the fear in her face just wash away. After a little while, she laid back on her pillow and she died very peacefully. I think Adele found the place of rest in the middle of things. Do you see? None of the conditions had changed. She was still dying. Her breathing was still erratic. Um, she was still cold. Um, none of those conditions had changed and there wasn't really anything else we could do to manage those conditions. But we could be with her in a different way and we could orient her toward being with herself. We always think that our rest is going to come from managing the conditions, from going on vacation or getting our list checked off. I think we can find a place of rest right in the middle of things.